I know in a, the lake is, um, lake management has been looking at this, but at some point, the selectmen have to say enough is enough, and here's what we're going to do to because as individuals, we cannot do that, and I would urge you to do that, please. Thank you for your comments. Yes. Hi, Mary Reichel, 34 Doty Road. Um, I'd like to give some background and then what have we done and what more can we do? And I have a statement that I can provide so that you can uh, use it after. Um, and asking residents who have been on this lake much longer than I, it's probably approaching 35 to 40 years that peace has been on this lake. I personally have probably um, scooped up, plugged gallons of goose poop. It has been a nuisance. It's an ongoing nuisance, not only on Columbia Lake, but on most water bodies, ponds, et cetera. So with that said, the CLA did a survey in November of 2021, asking their members, of which there are 110 households, now up to 120, 70 responded. What were the lake water quality issues and the number one issue that came back, 80% of 70 people who responded said uh, invasive species. Makes sense. We've had a little hiccup with that and we've done a great job. The second, 70%, 48 of those people said the geese and the growing geese population. To Carmen's comment, <clears throat> are they growing? I think over that 35 year period of time where we may have seen 10 or 20. Last year, we saw 52. And early on this year, we saw six families with so many goslings, they were up to 40. So that's 12 adults and do the math, 28 little goslings hanging out. Two weeks ago, 19 more adults came. So we're up to almost 60 um, like adults. So what have we done? To Carmen's point, LMAC has monitored this for three years. We have worked with deep wildlife to understand what is it we can do legally. And we have instituted educational approaches in terms of non-lethal techniques to try to get rid of geese. You can get rid of because they'll fly away. The problem is once you have goslings, they don't fly. So we have six families, 40 on the lake with 28 little goslings that are gonna be an issue and a nuisance. To date, we have done educational things and we have done individual things, as Karen has said. We've talked about hazing, spotlights, lasers, motion sprinklers work, I can guarantee you. Vegetative buffers work. I'll give you a quick example. To my left of 34 or 32, or 36 or 20, put in a brand new vegetative buffer two years ago. There are no geese on their wall. The geese don't like to go past the buffers because they can't see the escape with their goslings. We have instituted, instead of picking up gallons of this stuff, motion sprinklers and uh, little fences where our cove is and where our stairs are. We have seen no geese this year. May help that I also have a 20 pound Scottish Terrier who loves to chase them, but they haven't even approached us. Nothing to my right, 32 are going, and the geese literally there were probably 30 on the lawn over the weekend. These are part-time people who come out just for the summer. These are people who work, so the geese are gonna come. So to date, we've educationally said, here are the things we can do. There's a copy of the list that we provided to CLA members. What more can we do? I think as Carmen has said, we need to probably work closer with the town to identify non-lethal methods there are a couple more we could do. One we just became aware of is the use of border collies, trained dogs that are predators of geese that will chase them off certain properties, such as perhaps the town beach. Maybe we pilot it with a couple of other neighborhoods. What more can we do? I would hope we can stay focused on non-lethal, but at some point we may have to consider lethal approaches. Addling eggs does not work on Columbia Lake because the nests are not on Columbia Lake. 
we have found that most of the nests in working with deep wildlife are probably at Upley Pond, which is the main tributary stream that fills Columbia Lake. That pond is where the geese typically nest. And we have bikers and kayakers who have told us we see them coming right down Lake Road, right down the Rodoni Road after they've thrown with their little goslings and right into the Utley Stream and into the lake. So addling does not work. If we consider lethal methods, we have to consider lethally removing them. That requires working with DEEP and or the federal government to be able to get permits, to be able to take these geese away. Would you round them up? And I'm not advocating either of these methods yet or whether one or two a day are disappearing because of lethal methods that can be used on the lake. You obviously can't hunt on the lake. Uh, I think with all the lakefront properties the closest, it might be a little dangerous. So we have done something more individually. I think we have to collectively uh, work with LMAC and with the town to say, what can we do to coordinate non-lethal approaches so all lakefront properties are protected or as many as we can get involved versus um, should we consider lethal me measures, which I don't believe we're there yet. Personally, I'm not speaking for LMAC or for CLA, just a personal thought. Speech is unhealthy. And it's just not, I can't imagine that we consider part of the lifeguard's job is to clean up these plus lifeguards don't start even i mean they, they've been there a day or two on the weekends they haven't been there um when a lot of these pictures are taken okay well i appreciate your statements um I, I mean, I can see where action needs to be taken now, but I'm not ready to close the beach for the summer. I'm not sure. If it's unhealthy, that is an option until we can eradicate the geese population on the lake. So I I'd like to see- I think we need to research unhealthy, Steve. Excuse me? I think we need to research unhealthy. Okay. It's then not, I, then it, we need to be careful terrible. about how how we say right it's you terrible know. to see goose poop yeah i get it and they're full of bacteria I, listen i'm a golfer you know and, and if we do take it up yeah we minimize the health issue but the health issue is you congest it and then you have health issues i, I understand so little children eating could be a potential issue well if it's on the beach now there is that potential anytime little children are there so um I know I talked to you a couple months ago about trying to do something and the lethal me method is difficult because of the lake and the proximity of surrounding houses and everything. And we'll get people who are upset by that. I talked about addling the eggs, taking a, a, a walk up there or up the up the pond or wherever looking. And you specifically said, you know, somebody who would get upset by that. Now, what I what I did say was, and Ann Dunnick's on this call, Joshua's trust came to us and said, in no way, shape, or form are we to go on their property, which is Utley Pond and Ann Lakes. So that was what happened. Okay. Well, I wish I could say somebody would get upset. It was a private. It was Ann, right? <laughs> I, I understand. Even um, even birth control. Golf courses do that. They do have some form. I'm just wondering what other other towns, other um, what other people do. Yeah, sure looking into the birth control will be a little bit, you know, I don't know. I, we'll have to look into that one. Yeah. Don't work, you know, put it on somebody's <laughs> lawn. It rains. It goes in the lake. And next thing you know, we're having trouble. So I, let's so give us a lot. Of it's just gotten worse. Over. I think the town of Wyndham just hired this for colleague. It's called uh, Central Connecticut canine training. And there are several towns that are, are apparently using the border colors. That's great for adults. They can fly away. And little goslings. 
Um, they fly away to the other side of the lake and hang out there sure. and go, eh, eh. <laughs> look at that border collar We're going back there tonight. Which is why you have to pilot it with several properties and literally have mm -hmm. the border collies go around the lake. Uh, okay, so Mark, you, right. you've done some, they've done stuff and he's well, follow up to this discussion. We have tried an audible return that didn't work. Now we have on order a low level strobe that's supposed to disrupt the geese at night so they don't want to sleep on their docks at night. Uh, we'll try that. Uh, the guards are full time starting this weekend and they'll be cleaning up every day. Uh, but the, the problem is we start using the beach long before we have full time guards. So uh, I told Mark Bolza to get back to me with options of coming up with hiring someone to help maintain the beach during the preseason. Uh, that's the problem though. We're very short handed with our public works department and um, I'm not sure. and one, one other option too is putting up a fence on the beach at night so that they're distracted from coming up on our beach from the water. At least the docks. You know, they may fly up there, but the gods are not flying up there. You said it yourself, they're not flying. So we put like a small, like the pickleball uh, nets that we roll in and out. We roll them in and out at the end of the dock there at the beginning of it. Maybe that takes care of that problem. I had to do that at East Haddon. We had to yeah. run snow fencing along the beach in the early season. Interesting. Yeah, uh, they came. Do that something similar, yeah. yeah. Along the beach. Yeah. But the, but, but it, We'll have to take a look. This is not easy to set up. Right. It's All not right. easy. But I think there has to be a coordinated effort. Maybe the CLA can support this of lakefront property owners understanding if you do this, it will help de deter them. If you don't, property. You're going to own them all. You got them all. Yeah. And, you know, you know, the property to my right is now where two motion sprinklers. They're sick of it too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so, Mark, let's do some research on different, not only strobe, but also <laughs> look into the. I heard about the dogs two years ago, but to be honest with you, I could see it more on a golf course because they fly and land over here with nothing in between. The dog continue to go. So when they fly across the lake and land on Carmen's dock instead of you or uh, instead of uh, you know the pecs, it's a whole body of water between them. And I, I don't know if there's that many dogs we can handle. It. So but we'll just, look into it. Just built a whole new dock, whole new wall, a set of stairs. I didn't realize I am providing the stairwell for the geese to come up, hmm. walk the stairs, and walk into the yard. I think your neighbor is actually putting bread down there so they stay off of their lawn. I'm just saying, I don't know. That's another way to do it. Oh gosh. Steve, you must know people who can make them stay. I can make them disappear uh, or know people. And it doesn't have to be lethal either. You just, everybody should take a week's vacation and uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll do some gentle netting and stuff and we'll find another home for it. Hand over or something. Uh, there, there are such things as goose roundups. Um, I, in working with deep goose roundups, the, the geese end up being euthanized. Uh, if you work with deep to do this right and that's the only way you can't do it. Well, what can they do with meat? Feed the homeless. Feed the homeless. I mean, as long as they're, you know, it's harvesting. Yeah. Um, I'm right. sorry. It's, it's only. It's harvesting as long as you use the meat. I don't have a problem with right. killing them if you're going to use the meat. No. That's so, what it's used for in a goose round. Yeah. And I don't have a problem with that either. Fish, eat the fish. Yes. They're only. And if we don't do something, I'll be honest with you, 30 years ago when my kids were swimming down at the beach, I don't ever remember seeing geese on the lake. Yeah. No, Mono -pono it's been the last 10 years that they've really course. arrived and, and started to, Probably you know, why don't the eagles do something about it? Take a <laughs> gosling every day, we'll be all set. Surely they don't like goose. Well, they don't do, they can't talk to the eagles. All right. We need some hawks. You know what? I bet you the eagles keep the hawks away. The hawks would go after the geese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's what's a natural it? predator. I was going to say, what's the natural predator? Of uh, the gosling. Collie dogs, coyotes, mm -hmm. sometimes owls. But Did you see that video of the woman who ran outside with her baby? She was feeding the baby, and an eagle 
was attacking her pet goose. Yeah. Honestly. And she ran outside holding onto the baby and screaming at the eagle and stuff. It did get away and the goose was okay. But I mean, a big domestic goose. Uh, so it can be. I wonder if she's they can be cranky if you go after their kids. So, oh, yeah. Um, so, all right. Well, we have some, we have some homework to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not easy. So, yeah. old business, none, new business. I'm actually uh, here for a second reason. Well, there's a second item as a citizen. No, okay, Is please there, go ahead. State your I'll name. be very quick. I'll just read the request. You can read the background. Well, quickly, I think you know this. Erdonia Road Beach exists. Yeah. And 200 feet down the road, Erdonia Road Dyke. Okay. Quick story. Last Thursday, we almost had an accident at Erdonia Road Dyke. For the past at least three to five years, instead of walking to a beach or walking to the dike to fish, we now have cars standing and parking at the beach or at the dike. As you go towards Andover, there's a really angled curve. We're coming up that way. You can't see cars going either way. Honda SUV parks at the dike, out fishing. School bus comes down going towards Andover. Woman walking her dog, not me, is stuck between guide rail on the lake side, guide rail on across the street from the road. School bus swerves around the SUV appropriately. Oncoming car. We would request, and the request is, and this is from several Ordonia Road residents, we requested this 12 years ago, that the Board of Selectmen take immediate action, hopefully tonight, to approve two no parking and standing signs, one at the beach and one at the dike. Thank you. There used to be. 12 years ago, one was taken up by vandals. And, I'm sorry, I'm getting copies for you. And uh, the then Department of Public Works head wouldn't put the signs back. Okay, so there. we'll look into that. If there was one there, please put it back. I don't know. I don't, it's traffic authority. We don't have to do anything. If there was one there, let's put it back. So let's figure it out. So one at the beach, one at the dike. We literally last year had a pickup truck lift a jet ski over the guide rail into the lake at the beach. This is what's happening. People are stopping and dropping off their kayaks and other watercraft, okay? But the jet ski, I think, was probably on Probably, I didn't choose to ask. But if I, I, need to, I need to ask a question, okay? You saw them do that? Mm -hmm. Did you notify anybody? Mm -hmm. Who? Oh, well, okay. I'm, I'm just, did somebody, did, was there action taken? I don't care about who, was there any action taken? Not to my knowledge. Do you have my number? Oh, yes. Call me. You sure? Call me. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> I, I don't wish for it, okay? I don't wish for it. If I'm around, I'll take the call. And if I'm not around, I will call the truth. Okay? okay? Thank you. We spend money not to have these things in our leg for invasive species of, you know, the fowl isn't up. I don't need the plants. We can't afford it. That's why we have the gate. Thank you. And if you'd like to tell me who you call, I'd love to hear it I'll another time. Um, so I, I don't know if there was one on the road dike. I don't even know where the road dike is. That's uh, that's where we have to fix where it's undermining. It's a right. that's a speed bump pass. right at the where the water stream comes into. It's the second tributary, most largest, right. uh, second largest tributary okay. on the right. where probably a hundred acres of wetland drains, <clears> and it goes it's right down. Is it becoming from uh, Lake Road? Is it before the, the beach area? No, it's down. <coughs> So yeah. Lake Road, yeah, the beach, yeah. and then 200 feet down, just before the curve, going up to Redoni, up the hill to Andover, it's right there. So, so right. we've had a lot of pedestrians use it. I mean, it's a historical right of way. Right. Um, right. So, in, in let me just while you're here, in looking at this, uh, so the board, I'm going to take a look at it tomorrow, and if I deem it's a place we're going to put no parking signs up, we okay to do that? Do it. 
Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. For sure. Now, is there? I have a question just out of ignorance. Is there Doney Road Beach just for the Doney Road residents? There's no parking, so you have to get there by bike or walk. Traditionally, for almost 100 years, it's been a historical right of way for first farmers who used to bring their horses, and then obviously people who used to just walk. So anybody capable of walking a distance would use it. Typically, the vast majority of people on or down, although there are some people on Lake Road who use it also. Typically, though. No, I want to be generous. Um, that seems like an easier fix than the piece. <laughs> that's an easier fix than the piece. Well, that's why I was reading this. <laughs> All right, so Mary, thank you very much for your comments, and I will be out there tomorrow and take a look at that. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Audience or citizen? Anything to? No, I don't think we should kill the geese. You know, I think we should find all the methods. But, I mean, but, no. uh, I'm sorry, state your name and your address. Elsa Ray goes to 78 with 66. Yes, yeah, we're moving in the geese. <laughs> I don't have any geese. I haven't I have not seen any geese in the lake. I mean, it's not my it's her backyard problem, it's her problem, but I haven't seen any no, that, in the lake. They're everywhere. But I don't think it's killing them. It's they're migratory birds. They will fly up. Like they will come back again. Even if you kill them all, they will fly back again. So. Yeah. Mm. You should. It's it's a dilemma. Okay. I hope we can use non-visual techniques. No, we cannot use visual techniques. It's just not no. Thank you. Um, approval of the 2022 steeplechase is back. That's wonderful. I move to approve the 2022 annual steeplechase tour that travels through Columbia on August 20th, 2022. This is an annual thing. They, they only go through Columbia on a very short um, off of, um, it's down off of um, Double Day. Double Day. Double, Double Day and Pine Street. Pine Street. Yeah, yeah they okay. that way. Um, they do it every year. They do a good job. We've never seen, we've never had a problem. I've seen some it's 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 before, so yeah. yeah. All those in favor to allow it? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. The Lions Club requests to place signs on the town green and town beach for tent rentals. We normally don't do this. Uh, um, they came to us, and you know, they're a group of people who. Rent out tents for parties and functions and stuff, and uh, it's all for charity. It's not a, a business for profit. Mm -hmm. um, what have we done so far, Mark? Normally, um, if, if we were to allow this, my recommendation would be set some time limits. Okay. I think it'd be appropriate to have the signs there year round. Yep. Um, it's just not something the green should. Yeah, but I did offer that the transfer station could be year out. Right. You know, that's an area where I'd, I'd welcome them to be. Right. And maybe if you consider the green or the beach for short periods of time right before 10th season or something, I don't know. The only thing we've allowed on the town green are advertisements for organizations that are nonprofit, like the Little League or with the Lions, and normally they're advertising an event like right. the barbecue, right? Not normally an ongoing commercial. Right. Yeah, we don't have a lot of signs ongoing, but no. So is it setting a precedent with the owner? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a good. They do it. They, you know, good what, job of that stuff. What are we doing with the uh, the sign out? On, they could not on. get magnetic boards. There's been a shortage. So <laughs> yeah, it's a shortage. Yeah, yeah. And in theory, it's about to be replaced because they just did a call before you get the sign manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping. But there's a, are we paying for that? Or the lines, the lines, the lines. Why don't they put their advertisement on the bottom? Like, uh, can they do that? Tent rentals. I think it's possible. It right be now, it says donated by the lines on the bottom. So. Donated by the lines or tent rentals available. And classic. I mean, it's, I hate to see them stuff. I don't even like the uh, politics signs for a month. Um, anybody else, any thoughts about this? 
I, I'm with you in heavy concern just about precedent setting, and then we have we have to step some sort of bounds, right? Because many of other nonprofit worthy organizations requesting some, and then we're. I, I like the idea that the transportation, trans transportation, they can put an ad, maybe part of the town, that things like that, fundraising on the newsletter. You know, they could put it on any lines. Can they do that? Put it on any lines, member lawn? Sure. Now, you can also, right before you come into the school, we own that grassy area that we created in front of the digital side. The same thing. The same thing. Yeah. And, and also, that would be full of signs. All right. Tell them uh, I, we're all in favor of the transfer, allowing them at the transfer station. All you want. Okay. Yeah. And just tell them. Um, they right do a now, great job with their rental. <laughs> right now, center of town and public property, we're not allowing. Yeah, they could put something on the bulletin board on the town. And what about, like yeah, Post inside the yeah. town hall? What about the town piece? That was another request. Yeah. I don't. Um, the same thing is setting a precedent. Right. Yeah. Do they have a community but, board? But then, how do we distinguish the transfer station versus the locations and the stolen town property? Yeah, we we're not worried about aesthetics. Okay. Yeah. The transfer station. Do we have a community board? Actually, a nice board? time to dress it up. I know. <laughs> well, I do intend that the transfer station to retain the old magnetic boards and create a new frame so that lettering can go up with a permanent sign at the transfer station. We'll rebuild it, it won't be as nice. But under that sign could be their tent. Sign. Well, I'm just thinking, you know, could you have the community board in so that if people have puppies for sale? Okay, the one in front of the old bank or the old firehouse. What do you mean? What community what board? Like at the beach, like a bulletin board, kind of. Oh, oh where you hang your I, I paint houses. Yes. Kind of stuff. No. We, we don't have really anything in town that does that. Yeah, good. I don't like that. I'm against that. Okay. There's a church bulletin. They can buy a space in the back of that. Um, and you know, there is that. You want to you want to put a board up? I, I'd be I'd be. I would discuss one down at the transfer station, but I'm not putting it anywhere. Papers are flying, and even if it's behind glass, nobody ever changes it. You That's know, right. want to clean homes, you know, 2016. Okay, and that is what pays for this. <laughs> so, all right, actually, that's probably where they should advertise. They should advertise for it. That's the best place on them. Yeah, it was a good domain name, name. lionsclubtentrental.com. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on Facebook. Yeah, so we're okay with the transfer station. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, approval to hire lawns, gardens, and more for the disc golf site work at Rec Park. I move to accept the bid from lawns, gardens, and more for three thousand dollars to provide the removal of logs, brush, hazardous stones, stump grinding, and the spreading of wood chips at Rec Park. That's for the disc golf site. Uh, Department of Public Works took out most of the trees and stuff. They're they're shorthanded doing things. We don't want to bog them down with mm -hmm. trying to pull out the stumps. Too big. Is there a price? Yeah, three thousand. Three thousand. And so actually, it, Andy thought that was a really good price. So that that, that, that didn't have to go out to bid. It, it did. I needed. Um, a, you got a no bid. I, I got two no bids, and from everyone I talked to, they said that do this for a living. They said that's a great price. Okay. Um, my concern is it took so long to get through in the wetlands that whole woods have grown out. Still, yeah. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, had enough about the Columbia Lake tonight. Women's and resignations. Resignation of Brian Paul, Public Works Highway Maintainer. I move to accept the resignation of Brian Paul. Um, Brian's found uh, another line of employment that suits him. <clears throat> A little bit more to his desires. All those in favor? Yeah, All right. Uh, I don't know why we have that. It's not like he's sticking around if we say no. No, it's just uh, part of it's in your 
four seconds minus for time to time. I thought that was you. No, I'm on part time. time. Full time, it's still okay. Your authority. In that note, I move to approve the appointment of William Johnson for the position of Public Works Highway Maintainer. Uh, so far, I've talked to Beth and for who we leave, we're picking up good people. So hopefully, and it's a good time of year to pick them up so they're ready to go. What's, the, what's that address issue over here? I don't see why there's a need to put the resignation. I think we should be made aware of it, but I don't think there's a need to make a motion to accept it. I would, yeah, yeah. yeah. there's certain people you'd hate to see it well, yeah. but you're not gonna stop. I'd be happy to, it is uncomfortable because the person already resigned. Yeah. It's not like you're gonna yeah. say, yeah. Right. No, you can't. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind, I don't mind approving the appointment of, okay. but really, honestly, I mean, that's I mean, obviously you're gonna replace what we're gonna have to appoint, but, but not, you know, yeah. And what I could do is just make you aware of that, yeah, like that. It's part of my that's fine, reporting. okay. okay. Uh, all those in favor of William Johnson, aye. Aye. Okay, town administrator's report. Um, good news, we received a $9,500 America Beautiful grant. Uh, this grant comes from DEEP, their forestry uh, division. And the purpose of this grant is going to be to take a whole inventory of all the trees on our town green here, which, and the green's quite a bit larger than what you see right here. Um, we're going to do an inventory because right now our maples are all dying. Uh, they're not going to be here a lot longer. Uh, so this will be a, a recommendation and planting advice of the whole inventory. And then event, once we have that all figured out and we design it, we'll go for another grant to actually purchase more mature trees to replace and remove the maples. That's that's good news on that grant. The bad news from Congressman Courtney was thank you for your grant request for the community project funding application. This was for the um, public works garage and the annex. But uh, even though our submission was well written and and uh, looked like a great idea with tremendous merit, the selection process was very competitive and we were not chosen. And uh, wait, I have one other thing to just bring up to speed on. Uh, uh, right now, on June 8th, tomorrow night, between 5 and 8, if anyone is interested, the Salmon River Watershed Partnership will be doing a five year plan where it's actually the beginning of the watershed in Montana State Park. Uh, and this is a group that's uh, been together uh, for a long time, and they, they want to try to upgrade their action plan. So that's, that's via Zoom. If you need how to get on it, just contact my office. And Thursday, there's a Zoom meeting for the Connecticut Mystic Country, Eastern Regional Tourism District. So um, I'm the representative for Stephen. Oh, well, they're still calling Mystic Country. I know. <coughs> I know. They, they've, they feel that all that matters is Mystic in this entire Beautiful corner of Connecticut. Beautiful half. We're, we're the Connecticut. invisible side of yes. Connecticut. Yeah. So we're <laughs> we're trying to change that, but they're not listening to anybody but the mystic focus. So that is at June 9th at nine o'clock, is it? Yeah. And that's all I have to do. You have some correspondence here, some nice articles and stuff. Talking about that. Oh, I this correspondence. Yes, I could bring everybody up. See, I just want everybody to be aware there was a, a great article on Columbia veterans in the paper. Uh, there was one mistake by a reporter that I've notified the reporter and asked him to, to fix it and also interview uh, one of our veterans from Columbia, James Gardili. Uh, James served. In World War II and 1943, he's 99. Oh. Unfortunately, the article stated that 77 years after the end of World War II, every person honored on our monument has passed on. So he came to my office and made me aware that he had not passed on. <laughs> so he, he lives in Wyndham now. He was um, very so, upset, though. So I promised him 
uh, we would write a letter of apology and we would notify the paper for a retraction. And we were going to try to take it a step further. Ingrid wants to see if you might want to be in our parade. Uh, so oh, yeah. who knows? That would be nice. But it, it was upset, but he, he kind of went and I think he was having fun. Yeah. And we explained to him that the memorial is not, not it includes all that served, not so, passed away. It was just the article so mentioned. The article and Russ and Zinga probably should have a uh, apology as well. Russ is still there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever get a chance to read some of these things? He brought a copy of it. Yeah, you can, you can, they're amazing. It's so, it's his, it's the mustering out pay. Two years, he did two years, seven months, and 21 days. He got a total of $300 total, but this payment is a dollar. <laughs> Soldier deposit, uh, it's just, and it has all his awards he received in the, the European campaign. No, he was in um, San Francisco. Uh, other than that, a couple of good things. Um, nice article. So now for transfers. I think we'll take this one. We have some transfers. Um, it's just because year end, we have some lines that have gone over. Uh, so we were shifting the lines that had not gone over the cover thing. Yeah. Group insurance professional tech, $3,400 for professional tech. It's nice to see that the fire department needs more money for the record. Right, so that's drug testing. They have so many new volunteers that the drug testing costs have gone up. Uh -huh. they, they, and physical. So they're getting more volunteers. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I make a motion that we approve transfers in the amount of $8,053 in the respective line items listed above. I have the summary here. Does everybody have the same summary? Yeah, yes. Summary. Yes. So it looks like we're keeping it in the same, same group. We're just moving it to a different line, line item. Okay. $2,700 for profession. Is there a problem like that? Mm -hmm. Current costs above various lines for building, official, and facilities budget. All those in any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. I'll just don't need this rule. Just work on the truck, tires on the truck, and fuel because the truck's driving out a lot. Make a motion. We approve the payment of bills totaling. It's different. Why is it different? Oh, I'm sorry. This should be 389.63.5. Approve the payment of bills totaling $380,963.45. Emergency regular credit card and paychecks. Nine thousand dollars there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was material. See payment of bills approval on page five. Three, five, four, five. Oh, did we put this back in the uh, American Business Telephone? It's back in this one. So, as you recall, there was some charges on there. Yes. Totaling $2,127. I didn't want to pay it, so we got some answers on it. Uh, we got the answers. I uh, like it. We own it. So we'll pay five Fire department research that I researched, it. Jason researched it, but all came up with the material.
Any other discussion? Okay. Can you elaborate on the um, billboard? Where is that located? And I'm just curious where and oh, the purpose of the AMP. If you want to recognize Katie, that's, that's her bucket. Our social service worker. Happens to be right over your shoulder. <laughs> so the town of Columbia, they we um, were awarded uh, prevention funds through our local uh, regional health behavioral action agency or organization, uh, CRAC. So they uh, awarded us, I think it's like around almost five thousand dollars. Half of it had to be spent for vaping focused prevention program. The other half is going towards mental health. Um, so the one billboard, I think it's like the one billboard in Columbia is on, um, like right by uh, the, uh, is it called the Wayne Moose? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So on, on that corner up there. Yeah, the there, up there by, yeah. Um, just before the Moose. So all of that is paid through that grant. So we've worked with um, an organization that did the vaping prevention program for the community. Um, really great to, to work with they're helping you know us develop the concept for visual um so we have a mock-up now and then i think uh it should be in production up for everyone to see the month of august um what, what is it what is it advertising <laughs> the, the call to action so it has to be under the concept of vaping prevention so um the messaging that we're trying to do is to educate people that vape has nicotine in it, um, because one of the issues with vaping is seeing a younger population start with vaping. Perhaps it has to do with the marketing. Perhaps it has to do with not really realizing how much nicotine is there. Um, I think it's a pretty well-known fact. Nicotine is not good for anyone's health, so <laughs> trying to minimize that as much as possible. So one of the things we're playing around with is showing the visual of the various different types of vapes, pods, you know, the mechanisms that people are using to, to vape. And one concept is to equal that to like the visual for a pack of cigarettes and how much that can increase depending on the device that you're using. So hopefully, some of that messaging can translate as people, young people are interacting with each other and that easy pass of like what looks very sleek and clean, like as a big thing, um, it can kind of, you know, trigger in that, hey, that's not just a flavored, you know, water aerosol. It's actually chemicals that can change your brain and get you addicted. You should show that lady that has the uh, the tray. Yeah, that would kind of gets me when I see that stuff. Okay, very yeah, good. So certainly anyone has feedback on what might be effective or programs that can be helpful. Right? Like, you know, like young people over my shoulder who might have a good point of view too. You know, we're all all ears on that. I think, you know, the more I've been doing this, the more I notice if I go for a run, the more I see disposable weights on the ground, the more I see that, the more things have opened up with COVID. I'm out seeing fields of younger people with mm -hmm. aging. Mm -hmm. so. can, can, can I just speak to you guys? Just, just one more to see the model. That's, that's a great idea. And I think I'm not sure who your target audience is, but I think displaying the different devices, I think, is probably great and would certainly help some young adults or maybe even older people. I think we don't know a little device which might look like a thumb drive and a computer, and that's where they charge these things, is actually our device. So I, I think that's great in showing the different devices. If anything, so adults who may not be aware of what to look for mm -hmm. people in their households. So it's, yeah, I mean, we're, we're up against the a lot these days with you know, how things can be masked. And actually, the, it might sound funny, but at the senior center on Friday, um, that, that group is coming in to do like a mini presentation here towards grandparents. And it's funny, I was there yesterday, and one woman was saying she, first time she saw vaping was bringing her grandson to uh, Manchester Community College. 
but but yeah, it's I guess the recognition so we can all be more aware. Knowledge is power, it takes a village, all the things. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Anybody else? Um just the barn, barn and the large dots. I was engineering for a, a road drainage for, for rebuilding. Which road was it? Was it Whitney? Or? It, there's Webster Lane and then there's DPW facility. Yeah, so DPW facility was to do a whole mapping of the entire DPW area so we could tell where to put buildings. Uh, and we had to map out the wetlands yeah. and all that. Thanks, Julie. Yep. else? Actually, I just had one question. It was more of the um, just the way it's coded the um, anthem blue cross. So that'd be there, yeah, um, there's a series of ones that say cancel the refund, and I wasn't sure is it cancel the refund. They're all positive numbers. I didn't know if there was a credit, and maybe it was an entry that should be a negative number. Or just the description was something I just want to bring to your attention. With that so, okay, John. It says page one. Um, right. It's for $2,358.30. Right. Does that have to do with um, where it is? I, it, well, one is dental. It's good signal. And the anthem. It's just that one. So. Well, we can't swing a refund. Right. So I, I don't know if it's crediting back a prior negative. I guess I just want to just make sure that it was well, you know, part card. of it might have been with some of our um, employees that have left where we're canceling their health care and refunding them for we probably took out the entire month and now they're leaving. Oh, okay. So we're probably refunding them for. A portion of what they can use. Did you ask? No, please. So you want a clear understanding of if we're canceling or refunding for a health care premium, what what's exactly involved in that? This should be a negative. Yeah, that, I'm just curious if it should be a, a negative value. Or that, that's a, just, just an explanation. All right, but your explanation would make sense if that's the truth. We're we're refunding it to the member that's left, right? That's right. Not, not I think we already deducted it, so we're giving it back to them. But I'll I'll verify. Can you take a look at the uh, gas prices and stuff here. The amount of stuff. I hope we're staying on top of all that. Well, we're waiting for. We we're not in the contract. I, I understand. <clears throat> but we can't go in contract. Hey, any other discussion? All those who say we're paying the bills, aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, audience a citizen? iPhone, are you out there? Give me an iPhone, anything? <laughs> So are we doing them or are they? Doing no, them? they they have. Yeah. Uh, are you interested in citizen? Anybody? No. Board member comments. Yes. So actually, I'm scheduled for a ride along tomorrow evening with the Marine Patrol. So I will report. At the next meeting, how that works. Do the goose count. Okay. Actually, the only reason I ask people to ride along is because you have to clean the dock before you go home. 
<laughs> okay. Be prepared. You, out of curiosity, when they claim the dog, where do they put the? They, there's a receptacle there. No, we have a bucket. I mean, shovel it into the bucket. We take it up to where the bait is deposited, which doesn't get back to them. Well, I'm just. Can we do something with the composting? Maybe it's, somebody. It's composting it. in a giant. Stage your address. I'll take the son of a gun. You, you, you don't understand me well. Because yeah. <laughs> you don't think I wouldn't I be interested in it. Because there might be people, which, you know, you could have a receptacle down and eventually at um, transfer a the transfer station and possibly do composting down there. Just saying. Isn't there weird? Can we get a drum or something and uh, people will turn it and stuff? Okay. We have that at Zegna Farm. We do? So bring it to Zegna Farm. There you go. Have a. Let's talk. let's talk just to the Zegna Farm committee first before we start. I'm just saying, they may be interested. It, it is extremely nutritious. Rich in nutrients. Yes. Of course it is. It's, it's vegetation, vegetative food. <laughs> There's not much better than that. Not good with water. Uh, sure no one else? So at this time, I'm going to suspend the board of selectmen meeting, and we are going to go into executive session. And I invite Mark to stay, or Katie to stay. So at this time, seven. Thank you very much. Seven fifty-six. So I'm turning off the recording. We're executive session at eight fifty-four. Oh my goodness! What the heck? Yeah, yeah, I, I know. We're usually home. Can we go around and adjourn? Oh, yes, please. Make a motion to adjourn. Oh, <laughs> 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 Someone like you. <laughs>